Today, we will explain two crucial types of behaviors in behavior analysis, respondent and operant. Respondent behavior, as the name suggests, is our automatic or reflexive response to certain stimuli. Think of it like your body's autopilot switching on when you touch a hot stove. You don't consciously decide to pull your hand away, it's just an instinctive reaction. On the other hand, operant behavior is more about choice. It's voluntary, driven by the consequences of our actions. Essentially, it's all about learning from experience. To fully grasp these concepts, let's dive into some real-life examples. Imagine walking into a bakery and the smell of fresh bread hits you. It's a familiar scent, comforting and mouth-watering. Without even realizing, your mouth begins to water in anticipation of the deliciousness to come. What just happened here? You, my friend, have just experienced respondent behavior in action. This is a classic example of how our bodies can react automatically to external stimuli. In this case, the warm enticing aroma of the fresh bread served as the stimulus. It triggered an involuntary physiological response, salivation. This wasn't a conscious decision on your part. You didn't decide to salivate, it just happened, a natural response to the sensory input of the smell. Respondent behavior, also known as reflexive behavior, is built into our biological makeup. We don't have much control over it. It's our body's instinctive way of responding to the world around us. It occurs as a direct result of a specific stimulus and is often linked to survival instincts. For instance, pulling your hand away when you touch something hot or blinking when something comes too close to your eyes. Next, let's consider a child who cleans their room and subsequently receives praise from their parents. Now, this isn't a random act. The child's action of tidying up their room is a voluntary behavior. It's a conscious decision made with a specific goal in mind. This is where the magic of operant behavior comes into play. In this instance, the child's behavior is influenced by a consequence. The reward or reinforcement in this case is the praise received from the parents. The child identifies this praise as a positive outcome, something desirable. This positively reinforced behavior then becomes something the child is more likely to repeat in the future. Why? Because it led to a favorable outcome the last time, and who doesn't want more of that? This dynamic is a quintessential example of operant behavior. Operant behavior is all around us, shaping our actions and decisions on a daily basis. It's a fundamental aspect of learning, influencing everything from our daily routines to our life-changing decisions. Although both play key roles in shaping behavior, respondent and operant behavior have distinct differences. Let's take a moment to review. Respondent behavior is essentially reflexive and automatic. It's like your knee-jerk reaction when the doctor taps just the right spot with a hammer. You don't plan or think about it, it just happens, triggered by specific stimuli. On the other hand, operant behavior is voluntary and strategic. It's the choice you make to study for an exam because you know the consequences, a good grade or perhaps avoiding a bad one. This behavior is driven by the outcomes of our actions, not by a reflex. In summary, while respondent behavior is all about automatic reactions to stimuli, operant behavior is about conscious decisions shaped by the consequences we anticipate. For more training, visit our website myabamentor.com.